hello today i'll show you how to create a customizable dynamic calendar using google sheets you will learn how to pick any month year and even choose whether your week starts on sunday or monday so let's get started let's begin by setting up our custom sheet in column e i have entered numbers up to three i'll quickly drag them down to cover 12 months for the month names I've entered January and now I'll just drag it to autofill the rest. Next, I'll add weekdays with corresponding numbers in the adjacent column. In Google Sheets, the default numbering for weekdays start with Sunday, which is considered as 1, Monday as 2, Tuesday as 3, and so on throughout the week. Now in column B, I'll label the headers month, year, day and in column C uh, I'll add a drop down menu for the month and for that select the cell in column C navigate to the data menu and then choose data validation click add rule for the criteria select drop down from range and in the pop-up box choose the range that contains your month names from january to december like this and click ok to enhance the display select advanced options you can choose the display style i'll uh, i'll go for arrow and then click done now when you click on the drop down in cell c3 you'll see all the month names and you can easily select any month you prefer Moving on to the next header, year. In this field, simply type in the year you want to focus on. And now I'll add another drop down for the day. Again, click on the add rule in the data validation menu. Choose drop down from range. And for data range, select Sunday and Monday from the weekdays like this. And click OK. And again, I'll choose arrow from the advanced options and I'll click done. Now you can check the drop down and you can select either Sunday or Monday as the starting day of your week. Now let's do some calculations. Firstly, I need the selected month name from the drop down. And for that, in cell C9, type equal to and click on the drop down cell that is C3. This will automatically show the chosen month from the cell C3 in cell C9. And next, I'll calculate the month number using the VLOOKUP function. This function allows us to search for a value and retrieve information from a related table. So I'll just type the formula. With the formula started, enable the formula help or just follow along here. The first argument search key is what we are looking for. Select the cell with the chosen month name, that is C9. For the range parameter in the VLOOKUP function, it's important to note that VLOOKUP searches from left to right. But I need to retrieve month number which are in the leftmost column while the month names are to the right. To handle this situation, uh, I'll use array of ranges and for that, I'll use curly bracket. Now select the range containing the month names that is F4 to F15. Now place a comma to separate the ranges. And next select the range which hold the month numbers. And it goes from cell E4 to E15. And close the curly bracket. Now by creating the array of ranges we ensure that we look up searches in both month names and month numbers simultaneously this allows us to effectively match the chosen month name with its corresponding month number for the index argument which represent the column from which to return a value enter 2 because the month number are in the second column of the array add another comma and finally for the is sorted argument I'll enter 0 to indicate that our data is not sorted in ascending order and I'll close the bracket. 
now you can check as you select the different month names from the drop down in c9 the corresponding month number will automatically appear in cell d9 next i'll create the date to display the first day of the selected month from the drop down i'll label date in b11 and in c11 where i want the first day of the selected month to appear i'll use the date function just type the formula date function requires three arguments year month and day for the year argument we'll use the value the user will enter in cell c4 next is month we'll use the month number we calculated using the vlookup formula and finally for the day argument i'll just enter one since i want the first day of the selected month and close the bracket and just press enter the formula will process these inputs and provide the exact date of the first day of the chosen month next let's determine the weekday of the calculated date and for that in the cell below i'll enter the formula weekday and then select cell c11 where i've calculated the date and close the bracket press enter and you'll get the weekday number which reveals the specific day of the week for that date so as you can see i got the result 3 which corresponds to the tuesday for august 1st 2023 now let's proceed by subtracting the weekday number from the calculated date the subtraction will yield a new date i'll just explain it a little bit initially we calculated that 1st august 2023 corresponds to a weekday number 3 that is tuesday now when we subtract 3 days from 1st august 2023 we arrive at 29th july 2023 this means we are moving back 3 days from tuesday landing on a saturday to verify we can use the same weekday formula on the result 29 july 2023 and i'll get weekday number 7 that represents saturday this interesting aspect of google sheets is worth noting when you subtract a weekday number from a date the resulting date's weekday number will always be 7 and this consistent behavior simplifies calculation and helps maintain accuracy in your dynamic calendar now let's calculate the value of the first sunday for the selected month using the if function this function allows to set conditions and return different values based on whether the condition is true or false the condition i'll check is whether the week day of the first date of the selected month that is c12 is equal to 1 that is sunday if the condition is true i want it to return the value in cell c11 the calculated date of the first day of the month but if the condition is false that means first day is not sunday I'll add one day to the value in cell C thirteen, and just close the formula. This formula will essentially check if the first day of the month is Sunday. If it is, it will return that date, and if not, it will add one day to the date in cell C thirteen to find the first Sunday of the selected month. now i'll check for the first monday and for that i'll again use the if function the condition we are evaluating is whether the weekday of the first day of the selected month that is c12 is 1 if the condition is true meaning the first day is sunday we'll subtract 6 days from the first date that is in c11 and if the condition is false meaning the first day is not sunday we'll add two days to the date in the cell c13 and i'll just close the bracket 
This formula checks if the first day of the selected month is Sunday. If it is, it will calculate the first Monday by subtracting six days from the calculated first date. And if it's not Sunday, it will add two days to find the first Monday of the chosen month. Okay, next I'll determine the first day of our calendar. Again, I'll use the if function. And the condition I'll check here is whether the user selected Sunday from the drop down in cell C5. If the condition is true, that means Sunday was selected. I'll use the value in cell C15 as the first day of the calendar. And if the condition is false, that means Monday was selected. I'll use the value in cell C16 as the first day of the calendar. This formula essentially checks if the user choose Sunday from the drop down. If so, it sets the first day of the calendar to the value in cell C15. And if Monday was chosen, it sets the first day to the value in cell C16. This way, the calendar starting day is determined based on the user's selection. And now the fun part, let's build the calendar using our calculated values. I'll add a new sheet and I'll name it calendar. To format the entire sheet at once, click on the top left corner. You can adjust the font, set horizontal alignment to center and vertical alignment to middle. Remember, formatting is optional and can be customized to your preference. I'll merge cells B3 to H3 by selecting and merging them. And then I'll drag the merged cell downwards like this. This space is for the header of the calendar. And to get the header, I'll enter the formula equals. And I'll go to the sheet, customize. And I'll give reference of cell C3 and cell C4. And in between, I need to enter space. And for that, I'll write ampersand and add quotation marks like this and give the reference to the cell C4. In this formula, cell C3 represents the user selected month from the drop down, and cell C4 is where the user inputs the year, and the combination will generate your calendar header such as August 2023. You can enhance the header's appearance by adjusting the font size and applying the formatting. Next, click on the cell B6 to set the first date of the calendar. Just type equals and give reference to the cell C17 of the customized sheet and press enter. The full date will be displayed, but for our calendar, we only need the day and to achieve this, select the cell and then navigate to the number under the format tab and select custom date and time. From the options, choose day without leading zero. You can explore different styles in the drop down and click apply. Now you'll notice that instead of the complete date, you see only the day displayed in the chosen style. In cell C6, enter the formula equals B6 plus 1 to obtain the next date. Then drag this formula across cells C6 to H6. In cell B7, write equals B6 plus 7. And in cell C7, write equals B6 plus 1. And then drag the formula across cell C7 to H7. Repeat the process for next 4 rows. Or you can just copy the whole row and paste it. So we got all the dates. Next, I'll display the weekday names. Select cell B5 and write equals B6. It will set it as the same date as in cell B6. Now go to the format tab in number 
select custom date and time and choose day as an abbreviation and click apply now you'll notice the day name appears drag this format across cell b5 to h5 and it will automatically populate all the weekday names for you so our calendar setup is complete feel free to adjust the values in the customized sheet to verify its functionality for instance if you change the starting day to monday you will observe how the calendar adapts by shifting the start day and dates accordingly similarly altering the month to january will generate a calendar for the specific month you also have the flexibility to adjust the size of the columns and rows to modify column size select all the columns simultaneously or click and drag to highlight then adjust the size of one column and the change will apply across all the selected columns similarly to change the row size select all the rows in the same manner and modify the size of one row the change will be applied to the all selected rows to remove the grid lines navigate to the view tab and deselect the grid lines option under the show section like this i have already applied border to the calendar columns and rows that's likely why these lines are appearing our customizable dynamic calendar is now complete featuring the ability to adjust the month year and starting day i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions or suggestions please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below i'll be sure to respond in my next video i'll show you how to take your calendar's visual appeal to the next level using conditional formatting this technique not only adds visual charm but also improves navigation and elevates the overall user experience Thank you for watching everyone if you found the video helpful please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you're always in the loop about my new content